In preparation for racking our beer into our bottling bucket, we're going to of course need our bottling bucket with spigot. We've got our racking cane and in this case I've got an auto siphon attached to it, which is extremely helpful. I've got my bottling wand, a wine thief, stirring spoon and hydrometer kit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sanitize everything. I'm going to run Star Sand Solution through the tap spigot uh, making sure that everything's clean. Everything has all been previously rinsed and washed and um, originally washed through with OxyClean. Um, so really all I'm doing right now is sanitizing um, preparing for the beer solutions to go through it without contaminating my beer. Um, so I'm going to sanitize this. I'm going to put it on a sanitized tray and I take my final gravity reading um, before racking my beer into my bottling bucket. So I have star sand solution in my bottling bucket. I also have my racking cane in here as well. The lid's on. I'm going to give this a thorough shaking. I've already sprayed down the inside and sanitized it. But this is a handy way of also making sure that all of your um, equipment that you're using are sanitized in the same way, same time. And again, you're going to get foam completely food safe. And I'm going to open the spigot and allow the liquid to drain out through the spigot, which also cleans out the inside of the spigot um, and sanitizes that. And we're almost ready to rack our beer. Alright, so let's see what we got here. Oh wow. Wow, that smells absolutely amazing. Wow. Alright, so we have some good crowds in there. I'm going to take off our lid. I can smell the hops. Mm. Now, the Dragon IPA um, had a combination of multiple different hops. Um, Cascade, Centennial, Amarillo, and a little bit of Summit. So, this is a very aromatic beer. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my Wine Thief and I'm going to get a final gravity reading. So I've got my Wine Thief here. I'm going to take out a sample. I'm hoping that the final alcohol by volume of this beer is going to be between five and a half and six percent alcohol. Um, if it's slightly under than that, I won't be disappointed. But uh, my goal here was to have a nice sessionable sessionable beer uh, with a lot of hoppiness and a lot of uh, fragrant aroma. And this beer smells amazing. There's a little bit of hop oil on the top, but I don't think that's going to be much of a problem. All right, so we have our batch priming solution. We have our racking cane and auto siphon set up. I've got the hose running into the bottling bucket and you can see how I position the hose at the bottom. This is to create the whirlpool effect. So as I start siphoning the beer into my bottling bucket, it's going to swirl the beer solution around. Um, it's also going to mix up 
the priming solution. Um, and when we start bottling, I'm actually going to be doing a little bit of stirring to make sure that this uh, solution stays uniform. So we're just going to pour the solution in here. Now the bubbles are again from Star Sand, perfectly food safe. And we're going to start siphoning. Alright, so I started the siphoning process. You can see how the beer as it's coming into the bottling bucket is forming a whirlpool. We're making sure that we're not aerating or splashing our beer. At this point, we don't want aeration in our beer. As well, the racking cane is off the bottom of the fermenter where all the trub is located. We're trying not to suck any um, residual trub into our beer. Um, we want our beer as clear as possible. There will be enough yeast floating around in solution to uh, carbonate our beer. So you can see that's going pretty good and it smells amazing. Alright, so now we have our bottling bucket set up um, with our bottling cane in place. We have all of our clean and sanitized bottles. We have our bottle caps, our crowns, and star sound solution, and the PET caps. And of course we've got a redneck bottle capper, which was showcased in a previous video. Now while we're bottling, um, what I do is I stir the solution gently um, to ensure that um, our original batch priming solution is mixed thoroughly through our beer. Um, and that way we get a nice even carbonation throughout the batch. And because bottling is messy, have a mat underneath your bottling bucket. Saves the wife being upset and having a sloppy mess. Now the nice thing about using a bottling cane um, is that it ensures that you have adequate headspace um, and that way you don't overfill your beer um, and potentially have an explosive mess. One down. I'll do a couple bottles um, and then I'll give a gentle stir and I'll do a couple more. And now let's see the redneck bottle capper in action. We've got our bottle. So 
lower our lever arm. And we've got our sealed beer. Lower our lever arm. So we got about two and a half flats of beer. Hey guys, well that was a busy day. Uh, we ended up with two and a half flats of beer, uh, including three large growlers, so that was pretty impressive. And thank you for watching the process and I hope it helps you in your brewing adventures. Um, also, I brewed up three of these bad boys. Now, um, I'm approaching 100 subscribers now on my YouTube channel. Um, so what I'd like to do is uh, give at least one of these away. Um, so what I'm going to do is take a random um, draw from my 100 subscribers when we reach that um, and add an additional entry for each legitimate comment that you make uh, on my videos. Um, and uh, one of you could get a Dragon Claw IPA. So anyways, I hope that uh, you enjoyed the video and uh, have a great day. So come on over, pull up a chair, have a beer with me. Cheers.